everybody, here we are again for our lunchtime learning session and today we are going to be talking about maths anxiety and we've got a very uh, special guest, math guru that my kids grew up listening to. Uh, we, some of you might not even know what maths anxiety is, you might just think you're, you, you're, you suck at maths or um, but today we're going to be go exploring that issue and we're going to be talking about ideas to help you uh, overcome it and strategies. So uh, let me introduce our guest today and it is Pat Murray. He is a very inspiring teacher. Uh, my kids listen to him for, I still get the maths reports from Math Online because I haven't switched them off yet. Uh, but he taught my kids maths through his online platform, Maths Online, uh, for about, for all their high school years. And he is a husband and a father of 10 children. He's been married for 35 years. He pioneered online education in Australia with his Maths online which when it first came out it was free uh, and provided through McDonald's and that's when we joined up so I think we were one of the first people to join um, and he now goes into many many countries a worldwide sales uh, getting 80 million dollars uh, that's amazing uh, he I bet you didn't believe it when you were just a high school maths teacher that this is your in your future uh and so we're going to hear from him now so do you want to say hi matt uh pat yeah hi everyone yeah thanks for thanks for uh michelle thanks for the invite and amanda thank you very happy to be here and um and i will try my best to to uh to give you a, you know whatever you like to hear really about maths anxiety and so on mm -hmm. and uh but uh, I'm really pleased. Uh, I really, I really like homeschooling people. I really love the homeschoolers, <laughs> actually. So we have a a, a big um, homeschooling group in the US, particularly that we um, that we help out a lot. But uh, and I've been over over there a couple of times in Cincinnati. I've been asked to to speak at a couple of functions there. But but uh, I'm really pleased that that I could be here. So uh, I'm ready to go when when you are, Michelle. Okay. Well, let's just start um, with this question. Um, can you tell us a bit about how you sort of worked out people had mass anxiety? Did you, because mm. I, I don't think I'd ever heard that term mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Yeah, no, it, I had to look, I, when I started teaching, I hadn't heard it either. It'd been, it, it was quite a while into my teaching career when I first came across, um, you know, what a definition of math anxiety was. And and essentially, it's a feeling of tension or apprehension, um, some sort of fear that, that basically just interferes with you know, a student's math performance. So, I mean, I could see it uh, in, in many ways with, with students, but even, you know, when I went and then did like parent-teacher interviews, so you were just talking to the parent as well, you know, about this about their, their child, and often the parent would say, oh, yeah, I was hopeless at maths. I was, I was you know, I... Uh, I just was no good at that, and 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 they um, and they'd sometimes tell me that actually that actually scared them. They sort of got, felt you know quite fearful about it. So that's when I, I guess I did a little bit of research in in the whole idea of you know a fear fear with maths, and and it was actually more more frequent than I would have anticipated. So um, yeah, if you do feel like that, or you have felt like that, yeah, it's um, you're not alone. That that's for sure. Mm. I'll put my hand up to that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, can't hear you, Michelle. I was never bad at maths at school. I just, I think I just couldn't remember when I started homeschooling how to do it. So I was, I was fine all the way up to primary in the primary years, but it was when I got to high school and I started trying to remember how to do all the algebra and move things to this side and that side i mean i thought oh you know i could relearn this i knew how to do it but it's it's just too it was just in the too hard basket so whenever my daughters would come my daughter would come and say to me how do i do this mum would say oh, i don't know just ush father yeah that's why i loved having pat murray because i'd say isn't isn't there a lesson on that on mass online <laughs> 
Yeah, well, a lot, a lot can ha- it can be with with you know sort of past negative experiences as well, and and that could be even just you know some some bad grades or a, a poor test or semester score that you you know you might have got that sort of can you know lead to a bit of a like a, a lingering sense of inadequacy if you like. But um, and and and, and when we when you talk about when I talked about parents, you know, parents, they teach, there's sometimes a, as this transfer of anxiety, you know, where you know the, the kids actually learn it from the parents right so um that that happens a lot too so i mean i mean one of the th- i mean we can get to a bit later but one of the things i really like to to make it un- well understood is that you know, there's no the fear of failure um you know shouldn't be there i mean you know to, to learn maths is is you're doing lots of trial and error you know you no, no one's perfect at maths no one ever will be but uh to actually lose that um that fear and that anxiety is, you know, it can be done, but um, but it's a lot easier if it's done without the parents transferring their anxiety on. So, you know, we can sort of discuss a bit ways of, of that. You know, so a bit of a personal question here, because you're the math guru and you have 10 children, do you think any of your kids had mass anxiety because they thought, you know, dad, Dad's perfect, so yeah. I better be good at it. <laughs> Look, that's a great question, Michelle. I'm sure of it. Actually, it, it it is. I mean, some of my kids were really good at maths, and others that just you know weren't that good at you know. And, and I'm sure um, you know so much so that um, two of my girls, uh, well, one of the girls who's who's now nursing now, she's nursing now, but she dropped maths in year twelve. And uh, she was, and she was really fearful of actually telling me that. Oh, she, you know, telling Dad, oh, I'm actually dropping maths, but that was okay. So that's interesting. So, yeah, it does happen. And um, and uh, but you know why why some kids are much better than other kids in in my own family. You know, I, you, know you don't know. They're all everyone's different. So it is. It is interesting, though. Yeah. So we don't need to have a sense of failure if if our kids. Uh, do struggle with maths a bit because even even when they've got Pat Murray as their dad, <laughs> they still can feel like they Correct. they're not Absolutely. that good at it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all kids have got different uh, different skills and you know and uh, interests as well. I mean, some of you know, yeah, you can you know some some of my kids are really interested and they really love maths. One of them end up being a maths teacher herself and and also interestingly a, a maths and, and English teacher which is an unusual combination yeah. but she did both whereas others just had no interest in maths really so it is yeah, yeah. luck of the draw. So so what do you think some of the causes of maths anxiety are? Well I think um well, well some of it is, is 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 initially they've actually started I mean when if you think of any kids learning anything when they're really, really young, they don't really have any fear of anything, right? So so the math anxiety must have come at some stage where they were struggling to do something, couldn't understand it, uh, and then, you know, probably repeatedly in their mind failed at something. And, 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 and then, you know, after failing something or, or couldn't do something, they've moved on to the next thing, that required them to, you know, that the, that required them to have that knowledge there. So it really is a bit of a compounding effect, and um, you know, and and quite often that sometimes you know if they go up and 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 see mum and dad for some help, they they said, oh look, don't ask me, I'm no good at it, or oh, I don't know how to do it these days. They do it differently these days. So there's lots of different reasons where, you know, this math anxiety can sort of build up. I don't I don't think it's an instant thing. I think it. It, it sort of builds up and then the kids do get convinced, oh, they're, they're not that good at maths because they'll hear that. They'll hear the parents, yeah. oh, I was never good at maths. So, you know, well, if a mum or dad's not never been good at maths and it makes sense that I'm never going to be good at maths. So I think it's a, a gradual thing. I don't think it just happens. I think it's, yeah, if that, if that sort of makes sense. Yeah. I was just reading a book by Natalie Wexler called The Knowledge Gap, and it was talking about how uh, a lot of the problems that go into high school uh, with education have their ground roots in the, you know, they call it elementary school, but we'd call it primary school. Uh, do you think that's right with maths? Do you mm. think that, that that's where a lot of the problems start? Well, it is. And um I mean, one of one of my friends, Tim Perkins, who was a uh, a university lecturer at Notre Dame in Sydney for for many years, 
and he was teaching primary school maths students or, 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 or teachers who are going to become primary school teachers. So he would tell me, and he did, he did a stack of research, and this, and this is not just in Australia, but right throughout the world, that it's up to 38% of, of maths teachers, primary maths teachers, have got maths anxiety themselves, right? So, that, yes. so that's a, a massive, that's a massive number. So 38%. So, and, and those teachers might be very good at English or creative stuff or other stuff, but that maths really, they struggle. And, and he was telling me of one student in particular who for a prac student, she went to, sc to, the, to the school and she was actually, before she got out of the car, she was actually leaning out and throwing up. She was that nervous mm. about maths. So much so that when she got in there, she didn't want to, you know, her supervising teacher, you know, what if she knows that I can't really do fractions or I don't really know my times tables that well? Well, the thing was that she went through this prac, her first prac, and the supervising teacher, unfortunately, had the same issues with maths, right? So she wasn't any good at it. <laughs> so this sort of just, it just keeps on going. So that's where it comes at the school level. Um, and so kids, you know, if they're at school in a regular school setting, they are exposed to, you know, if you've got 38% of teachers who aren't very good at maths, who've got no confidence themselves, the way they treat it, they either just ignore doing maths or, or, or do very limited number of maths lessons. And, and, and so you can see there's major, major problems there. I mean, one of the initiatives that we've got is because we've primarily been helping students when they hit year seven and beyond, but we've sort of the last sort of five or six years, we've really learned that, well, by that stage, it's, it's never too late, but it's really hard. Um, you know, if, if they've really convinced themselves by year seven that they're hopeless, it's really hard for that to be turned around. So what we are now doing is we're really working on a, a primary thing that's going to help a lot of primary schools, not just in Australia, but around the world. But but that's the big focus for us, uh, our company. But that, that gives you some sort of background on why maths anxiety is, is so it, it, you know is, is rampant really yes yes well I'm my daughter uh is doing teaching and and so she's the one who who would say she had maths anxiety mm. and she came home from she must have learned about it that lecture had a lecture on it or something and she came home she said mom you gave me maths anxiety you know and <laughs> and I was <laughs> Thinking, oh well I didn't mean to you know but she I think she realized that she she went to school when she was in year nine and she discovered that she actually wasn't that bad at maths uh for she was there for a year and I think that that helped her a lot but when she was doing the teaching exam just recently all of the teachers like you said had to do a uh, Tess, she said a lot of them were freaking out. They they mm. were just freaking out about the maths test. So mm. she she actually feels pretty pretty good now. But she was showing me one of the maths textbooks that um, the school was using, and I can't see that it was teaching kids in a logical way at all. It seemed to be jumping all over the place or missing out on concepts and things like that. So is is maths can you sort of help a child overcome mass anxiety by using, you know, good resources? Well, you can, yeah, yeah. But and, and it's really important that, you know, you mentioned that if it's going all over the place, that you actually sort of go back and and find out what the what the what they've missed, what the building blocks, you know, that they've missed and identify that. because uh, unless you correct, you know, unless you're able to correct some earlier stuff, maths just does keep compounding on on top of itself, but you know, the concepts and the uh, and the way that any sort of curriculum is based, okay, requires some, you know, some knowledge from from stuff before. So I think there are really good ways of identifying, you know, through diagnostic testing. And because, you know, a, a good diagnostic test just allows you to really pinpoint, oh, okay, I, I know pretty much all of that, or my you know, kid knows pretty much all of that, but they do need some help here. So let's just focus on getting a little bit of help there. And that, and that also builds their confidence as well, because they've, if they need some help there, that generally means that they've had some sort of, um, you know, p p performance where they've struggled with it or, you know, felt a bit of failure or, you know, all of those sort of emotions, I think, I guess, kick in. So if you can actually get them to go back and fix that up, that's a great sense of achievement, you know, for your child. 
And then if they, if they can think, okay, well, I, you know, having the right resources, well, that can help me with that, then that'll also help me progress. But it, it is important to go back and, and fix those things up because if you don't fix them up, yeah, you, you're generally going to be struggling. Your child's going to be struggling just from then on, really. How, how Are there any diagnostic tests that you, you recommend or are there any on Math Online that you have? Well, yeah, I mean, we've got some, oh, yeah, for maths online for sure. But, I mean, there, there are some stuff on, on, on you know, on, on the web. You know, there, there's a whole lot of good stuff on the web, on, on various websites. So that I guess one of the things that sometimes is quite difficult is that you can sort of go down a rabbit hole if you just, you know, on the, on the website, on various websites and that. Because I know, for example, I was going to mention about like some YouTube videos and that on, on actually maths instruction. Some of them are really good. Some of the stuff I've seen on YouTube from various teachers around the world have been, been fantastic. And then you see some stuff that's just, uh, let, let's say it's, it's not so good. But I, I guess the difficulty is if you're relying on finding that sort of stuff, it could take you a long time to find. And and I know, for example, I, I certainly value my time. And I'm sure as, as busy home homeschooling parents, you, you value yours. So it is, if you can find a good resource and, and and I'll always put my hand up and say maths online is yeah. pretty good, um, but we've got those diagnostic you know diagnostic tests and so on. And I, I know, didn't know that. I'll have, we'll have to find a link to that. And we'll put it in the yeah, um, bio yeah. The, at so, the bottom. And I I, th I think yeah a lot of the homeschooling parents that use our that use maths online will um, you know we, we sort of point them into that direction as a as a kickoff point, and then oh. um, and then get them to get get those areas fixed and. Um, just with our with our program, you've because you've got because you've got access to all years, not just the yes. one grade year that your you know your child's in. That allows you to sort of jump around a little bit. And um, so, one of the mistakes I'm so I'm putting my hand forward as like a terrible maths teacher. Um, <clears throat> so one You're of the such a bad person, Michelle. <laughs> That's what right. About you. <laughs> one one of the things I did was in the early years before maths online was existed uh i jumped around all the time mm. so i would start one resource and think oh this doesn't work i'd go the next one i'd go the next one uh particularly in high school that's when i was fine for primary but then when i got to high school i was all over the place and sometimes i was using an american curriculum uh you know it was all inches and different ways of teaching and stuff like that do you think that uh your i think i know the answer to this but uh if you're changing maths curriculums all the time do you think that that gives you different ways of solving things or do you think it 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 makes you get gaps yeah. Um, look, I'm not probably not so much gaps, but I would I, I would say that an inconsistent approach to how you learn that that's probably going to give you the the bigger issues. So an inconsistency in in a teaching approach. We've got various various styles. I know that um, you know any if you sort of jump from one resource to another, like different creators have different teaching styles. So switching them. Yeah, you know, const constantly can be very hard for the student then to adapt. So, if if you've got a resources a resource that your child's responding to well, I would just stick with it. I wouldn't sort of be jumping around too much. I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried so much that oh, if I jump from here to here, there's a gap. There's going to be a gap. I'd be more worried that okay, well, I've, my child's going well on this. Just just stick with it. That's you know, if they're getting good results, I wouldn't be, because that whole idea of you know, different different styles. I mean, every student also does, you know, can learn quite differently. I mean, we've had students who've tried our program and it hasn't suited them. You know, that that's fine. Okay, but it does suit a lot of lot of kids. So, but but my best advice is if you find something that, that your child responds to, then I would I would stick to it right as far as as far as that program will take them. So what about uh the idea of spiral versus mastery yeah okay spiral look i spiral's a difficult one if 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 it's if it's jumping around a lot if it's sort of jumping around a lot spiral can be difficult 
I, 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 but there is a way of doing both. The mastery, you got to do mastery. Yeah, you have, mastery is sort of a non-negotiable. You've got to get your basic skills and all of those things really, you know, really practiced well. And and the best way to do that is to have a, a certain amount of time at a particular topic. But if at the same time you can then mix in a, a spiral thing, so for example, a great thing would be like a weekly revision. And that weekly revision assignment uh, isn't just based on what they're doing this week. It's based on everything. So they basically, so your, your child consistently gets a um, exposure to uh, a weekly revision, which, you know, your first couple of questions might be about fractions. Then your next couple of questions will be about decimals. But something fairly consistent and um, that's probably one of the best things that I've ever seen anyone implement in a teaching program. So, so that so you get your both things. You get your um, you know your consistent your consistent spiral thing, and then you get your um, all your basics and you know you're, you're learning a particular topic over you know one or two week period, however long a particular topic might take. But I think to have that combination is really important. And I don't think too many programs do, unfortunately. So uh, you would say that Maths Online would be a mastery with a with a bit of spiral on the side. Yeah. So we yeah. So <laughs> ours really we really concentrate on mastery, and then spiraling. Well, each week actually. So we've got a weekly assignment, and uh, it's every week. The kids can do a weekly assignment, which which is basically that spiral, that spiral approach. So we we cover both. So do you think in in the um, when kids are learning maths and they sort of get a bit higher in the grades, like there's obviously a lot of practical things that you can do with them when they're younger, you know, working out areas and things like that. But as they get older, do you think? maths is all just textbook work and head work or is there much can you sort of are there any other ways to overcome maths anxiety or or sucking at maths uh than than textbooks and tutors like right. well look and any i think i mean kids like even if kids don't like maths if they if they get into a situation where they're like that they don't like maths what I've always found kids like is success, okay? Everybody likes success. So, I mean, you, you'll get some educators who think, oh, for a kid to really like something, you've got to explain, you know, how it fits into their life, you know, how they can use this on a practical day-to-day -day thing. Well, some, I mean, theoretically, that's okay. But, but in practice, that doesn't happen, right? Some kids really enjoy that sort of thing. You know, they, they really like, to, oh, I understand that this is great because it fits in here and there. They love it, but the majority of kids don't, right? So, so, and that is a big blow to a lot of educators because they think, because they, they're in love with their subject, right? So they're in love with their subject and they think everyone else should be in love, right? Yeah. But, re, but reality, reality check, it doesn't, it's not going to happen. So I found that from a pretty early age, I think. So I, in terms of early teaching in my teaching career. So I, I, I sort of look at, okay, these kids, some are really interested, but most aren't, but they're all interested in succeeding, all right? So that's, I sort of had, I discovered that pretty early on. So so I made sure then I tried try to set them up for success. So if you can set your kids up for success, and that that might be a gradual building up on something, okay, that's the most important thing really that they're going to learn in, in maths. They're the ability to succeed, to have confidence, which I always think self-confidence, which is different from self-esteem, right? Self-confidence is actually they, they, they build their confidence and capabilities because they've achieved something. Self-esteem is a bit of oh, pat on your back, keep on going. I, I'm sort I'm I'm big into self confidence, right? So yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that's building your child's capabilities. So that's that's what I'm big on. But um, but in terms of yeah, as they get older, math does get a bit more theoretical for sure. Um, but if they can succeed, and and the way math is structured, it, it is examined and it's all examined, so if they can start succeeding in those exams, and then, then I do see a, a big a flow on effect. Not just in maths, actually, sort of affects. Um, their confidence and other stuff as well, which is which is just great. Particularly if they've struggled with something, 
And if they if they found they've struggled with something really, and they might be working hard and disappointment and frustrations, and then they get some particular help that then elevates them to some level of success, then actually that's it, that's a great thing for other things as well. I've got a, a great story that you'll love for this. Uh, my <clears throat> son, I have two sons, and the oldest son uh got into medicine and he got his uh umat and it was a, a really really high mark and um and we were all going oh wow you know fantastic you got in you know we're all yelling and then the other son who who um was about he's four years younger he came and said mom i got my math online uh, certificate today and i got a gold star and we're like oh that's great <laughs> so they do they do love even if they don't particularly like maths they do actually like getting those certificates yeah. that maths online sends them after you know they finish a topic yeah, so right. yeah i thought that we always think that's funny, <laughs> that one. Uh, so how um, have you got any other tips for parents uh, who who have mass anxiety with their kids? <clears throat> yeah, I, look, I, I do. I think um, I think a little bit of a reward structure as well. I mean, you mentioned those certificates. Um, Michelle, that that's great that 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 you know kids you know quite like quite like them. But I think too, there's some great um, math games that you can find uh, that are fr actually free. We we deliberately haven't included many math. So when I say math, I talk to the US a lot. So I might I say I should say maths all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, um, I actually say math a lot because I write for <laughs> Americans too. Yeah, I used to get annoyed at people who said math. I say you're talking to a, like an American, but then I. Yeah, yeah, I heard a funny joke. They said, "Oh, in in a in Australia, we actually do it more than once." Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, I mean, I, kids, uh, some math games that sort of come to mind, like you know, like a battleship. Um, Monopoly is always a good one, I think. Mm. If, you know, snake, even snakes when they're really young, snakes and ladders, and 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 um, a game of boxes and so on. So those sorts of things, they're always they're as good. There's some really good. Um, there's one website. It's called uh, Cool Math Games. Oh yes, yeah. um, that's a that's a great. I love it. Oh, it's a great resource. So, so th those sort of things um, are always are always good. But um, and but they're a supplement, aren't they? Because they're uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, they're absolutely a supplement. Yeah. Because when we good. first started, we um, used a competition to maths online yeah. and our kids uh started using that and honestly they spent the whole day changing their backgrounds and buying hats and things like that and they weren't doing their math work so uh you do need to have a distraction free environment but i will say i don't know if you still have this on maths online but um do you have those speed drill tests still where yeah, you we can do that. Yeah. yeah, my kids would, um, and you get some sort of a reward for it, don't you? If they do, yeah, I, th I think, yeah, if you yeah, get, they're competing if you with get kids from all over the country. Dreamers well, and... my kids would sit there, um, and they were older, and they would compete against all the kindergartners mm -hmm. because they could win, yes. you know, the yes. the test. Yes. And I'd be like, get it, you know, you know your two times table. Come on, yeah. let's do something a bit harder. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That wasn't our, that was a, yeah, that was another program. But I know uh yeah, I Oh, okay, like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so, that was yeah, to get yeah. another we hat. Were, we were very aware of that because a friend of mine who was a yeah, you know, he was teaching school and he had the same thing, he had year, his year ten students, and they'll always and they'd always log into that that particular program. I won't yeah. mention who it was. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But then yeah, they would be, you know. You know, you know, yeah. they were jumping up, fist pumping because they, yeah. they, you know, you tend yeah, they beat a five year old, <laughs> beat a five year old. So, anyway, so. yeah, that's why we stopped using that program. And, and thank goodness, uh, Math Online yeah. came out so we could use that. Uh, okay, so I was saying to my daughter, I told Pat this before, but I was saying to my daughter that we were doing the interview today with Pat Murray, and he was like, Oh, I'm kind of fangirling, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Because she's had him speak to her for you know. You know, ten years. Oh, I, I, I'll tell you a funny story, Michelle. I, I'll tell you this. This was a funny story. I went to my uh, 
my daughter's school once this is a few years back now she was in year she was in year nine at the time that's right anyway her um and so we were meeting another teacher about something anyway there's the, there was a, a one of the teachers sort of spotted us uh, my wife and I and she raced down and and I hadn't known I didn't know this teacher and she introduced herself and she said oh I'm uh, I'm Julia's maths teacher and uh, anyway she gave us a name and I said oh nice to meet you and so on we're just here you know having to see the principal out something anyway um the next day Julia in school she says um she came back and said oh dad I had a funny experience in class today my my teacher came up and she said um she said Julia who's your favorite um, sort of pop star? And uh, anyway, Julia said, oh, I don't know, T Taylor Swift. And anyway, and then her teacher said, well, I met the Taylor Swift of the maths world, your dad. <laughs> she, she was just so embarrassed. I mean, it was just embarrassed. Yes, well, my daughter might have described you in the same way. <laughs> Okay, so um, when do you think a parent should get a tutor? Okay, um, it's an interesting one. Tutors are a bit of hit, hit and miss. I mean, if you can get someone who's been recommended by someone, I, I, I'd always go for that. Uh, if someone, if yeah, if you can, if if you know someone who's been rec who was who was helped, but I don't know when. I I don't know. I think. I haven't seen uh, if the kids are still in primary, probably not. Um, I'm thinking maybe once they get to year nine, year nine or year ten, maybe if they're really struggling. And um, um, yeah, I'm not sure, Michelle, really, in terms of when and and how long you want to tutor for as well. Um, maybe if if you get onto it early, I suppose, and that that sort of maybe means in, in primary, but. Um, the difficulty is with with good tutors is well, it, I mean they're pretty expensive, but hmm. they're a bit hard to find as well. Uh, I think. Yeah, that's, and that. and you can only get them once a week or something. So your actual problems that you've got, you can't solve on the at at the moment, which not is not really. You need you well, you need even if you have them once a week, they they'd have to have a situation or a a, pro, a a program in place so they could set them you know set your child work two or three times minimum a week. Mm. That's, I mean, minutes. the reason I loved math on online maths online mm. is because you were their tutor. I mean, you explained mm. the whole thing to them, and then they were able to um, then do the problem from that. Uh, I mean, I found that my my kids just thrived with that and even but when they did get a problem and they they didn't solve it some of them just avoided it yeah. um and and just didn't sort of progress so what do you do when your your child's just refusing to do I, I don't know if you can answer this question uh but someone will ask it no doubt yeah, uh, sure. what, do, what do you do if if they are kind of refusing to if they're refusing um yeah. Is I it think usually bribery works well? I don't know. It's a, <laughs> it is a tough one. If if they just um, you pro probably have to work out why they're refusing. I mean, if they're refusing because they're it's probably because they're not succeeding or they're they're struggling with something. Um, if, if they're if they're going well, they probably won't refuse. So I I don't know. It is it's a tricky one, Michelle. I don't know if I've got any answers. Really. But if they've got if they get. So another issue that I have, like there was one resource we used once and it was really long. So it took to, to do the lesson, um, it was about an hour in primary school. And um, was that an American book? Yeah, American know. book. Yeah, yeah I, I know. I know what you're Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I uh, use it with our kids too. We, we, uh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so I started saying, oh, you only have to do every second one because yeah. it was much quicker. Yeah. Uh, do you think that? they sort of get math fatigue if you yeah no look oh uh, yeah no no absolutely and no, that's a good and that is a good um solution what you came up with michelle because i've you know when i was teaching in the classroom i mean there would be there would be plenty of exercises where i would tell my students look only do the every second one that's enough that's what you need to do so yeah i mean look i i for any one sitting you know and, and it is dependent on age i mean the younger kids sort of in primary you know, you wouldn't want to do maths any longer than, say, 30 minutes, I wouldn't think, not in one session. 
And then when they get in the, the high school, it'd be 45 minutes would be tops as well. So and then twice that, a day, you know, how sorry? they get homework at night as well. Do you think 45 minutes a day? 45, look, five, that's what I mean. 45 minutes in the whole day. If they're working, yeah. I mean, if they're working, oh. that's work. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they'd need any more than that. Um, I, I think there is a, I think there's a tendency for a bit of homework overkill in Australian society these days. So um, I'm not a big fan of having, you know, way, way a lot of homework. So, but I, look, I think, you know, at, at the high school level, for 45 minutes, you know, year seven, eight, nine, maybe 10, 11 and 12, you might be going up to an hour a day. But really, I think if you if you're taught well and you know what you should be practising, that'll be sufficient. Okay, this isn't really a mass on, uh, this isn't really a mass anxiety question, but I know homeschoolers will want to know the answer to this. Yep. Uh, so we get a lot of people who will send us an email and they'll say, uh, what math program do you use? Because we don't use, we, we recommend maths online from yep. year three uh, to year 10. And, uh, and they'll say, well, I don't want to use a, an online program yep. um, for my primary school. I want to use a, you know, a paper uh, resource. Uh, is there any evidence to say that online resources, what's, what's the sort of evidence around online learning compared to like a paper resource or, I mean, I know with Mass Online you can download the worksheet and, and work on it on paper mm. anyway, so it's kind of not really a... Yeah. Uh, Look, a real I, I, argument. Yeah, but... no, that's a good question. And if you asked me this about five years ago, I don't think I could give you a good answer, but I can now. And in the fact that depending on the online resource, if the kids are not using pen and paper, then I, I, I think it's, 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 it's not, you're not going to get a very good result long term. So, you know, where, where the kids are only, you know, pressing a button here or, or, or typing something here, you know, typing an answer here without without using pen and paper, the results are bad, right? So you got to you've you, you've got to. We really encourage, and even though like a lot of our questions, these interactive questions we've got, you know, we're expecting an answer. We really want for kids to have next to them a pen and paper, you know, a, an, an exercise book so they can do all their working out there. So that's critical, uh, and, and that's. You know, and that's right through primary. I mean, that's just non-negotiable when they get to high school that they've got to show a lot of working out and and that. So, uh, in terms of evidence, I know um, you know looking at Australia's NAPLAN results, not not very good, and a lot of the schools um, that I know are using a a program which is an online program, not ours, but a lot, an online program which I I. I suspect gives the teachers uh, in their primary, the primary teachers uh, a little bit of relief time. Okay, the kids are busy on that work. You know, that's that's good. It gives me a bit of a break. Um, and But we're seeing the results through NAPLAN just sort of going down. So. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good to know. All right. Well, that's all the questions I have. Um, Amanda, have we got any questions? Uh... We do have a few. Um, just leading off the pen and paper one, Pat, um, yeah. one of our, our parents has just made the comment that they were very good at maths, but they, you know, when they were in university or school and um, so their child has been using it online and, and has been scoring very high results. But when they give them the same concept now on pen and paper, they look at them like blankly, like they've never seen the concept before. Right. Do you have any comment on on that? Um, and then someone has also said that um, can you print off maths online? But uh, Michelle answered that question. You can print off the exercises on maths online for all our parents who like to use the pay pencil and paper, which Pat has recommended too. Um, yeah, would would that just be a change in the way that they're used to doing it? Would that be the the reason they're blank, or should this parent possibly go and uh, you know start all the concepts again on the pen and paper principle? Yeah, or? yeah. Look, it, not necessarily start all the concepts again, but a diagnostic test might be the way to go on that one. But it's an interesting one because um, a lot of the uh, interactive type questions are 
essentially, I guess, are designed a bit for the kids to gives them a lot of help to get the right answer, if you like. Um, and, okay. and and that and then it might give them, you know, a, probably too many hints to get the right answer. So when they okay. actually see it on a just pen and paper, they're not given any hints at all. So yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, th- look, those point. interactive type things they have it. They have their place, and they they're good sort of like for brush ups or quick quick practice and that. But you don't want to rely on them, you know. Um, in the, you don't want to you solely rely on them because you'll run into a lot of troubles. Right. Thank you. Um, just talking about the maths concepts too. We've got another question that um. Uh, how would you schedule it in if you were tackling something like starting a new concept with a child and then realise that there is a gap, like there's something, a foundation's miss, the foundation's missing somewhere? Would How would you address that at, at the time as a homeschooling parent? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, look, yeah, if you can identify it, great. And then you would, look, I always think it's better to then go and fix that problem, get it, get it all fixed up before progressing. Uh, right. I, I think because other than, I mean, if you're sort of trying to fix that problem as well as trying to progress, I think, again, you're going to run into tro- with, get, run into problems. So get that fixed up, get their confidence built up by fixing that. And then, then so can stop the lesson immediately. And yeah, look, uh, yeah, and yeah. Don't, yeah. And I think another thing is don't pressure, don't pressure yourself. Oh, I should really be up at this stage. You know, I, I, I should really, you know, do we're halfway through the year or whatever it is, you know, I, I do think some parents put too much pressure on themselves, which then, funnily enough, goes to their parents, yeah. I guess, their kids, that, they, you know, they're thinking, oh, I really should be up to this stage by now. Or why aren't I up to this stage or not? So I always sort of think uh, it's a little bit, I had it described to me really well. If you think about, you know, your ideal or something, you, you've got your horizon there and and, you know, no matter how far you're walking to the horizon, the horizon's still there. If you just measure yourself against the horizon, you'll always measure yourself that you're never going to get there. So a good way to measure is also measuring backwards to see how far you came from. So I always think as a parent, that's a good thing, you know, not just in maths, but in lots of things. Mm. Thinking, measuring yeah, back how far teaching. you came rather than always, because you'll never, you'll never get to the horizon. You'll never get no. to it. It's great to have the ideal, but just always, if you're only measuring against the ideal, You'll never, you'll never get there. You'll be very frustrated. Yes. What, what about times tables? That that's often a question we oh, get asked. Yes. I, I I always think it's unbelievable where people can say, "Oh, time tables, you shouldn't do it." That that's a non-negotiable. You've got to be really good at your times tables, and you know, unfortunately, you know, our educators, educating experts, have done you know everyone a great disservice over you know the last two or three decades, really now to say that it's not that important, but it is just super important. Yeah. So, um, you know, so it is really important to know that your times tables. And what about long tables. division? Sorry? Long division? Long division. No, don't need to know that. That's, that's one thing is, yeah, yeah. I, I sort of make a point, even in one of my lessons, when I am teaching long division, I say, look, I'm going to teach a long division, but look, if you don't get it, don't worry, because yeah, it is right. super hard. You, you know, one long division question might have, in, inside at about 30, 30 to 35 calculations, right? So to get that long division right, you've got to get 35 separate calculations right, right? It's pretty tough. So, you know, yeah. So don't worry, yeah, if you're struggling with long division, because the funny thing is, even though it's done in year six, introduced in year six, the next time it's ever seen is in year 11 and only for the extension kids. So say the top eight uh, percent of kids will will ever see that long division concept again right that oh, gives you an idea how hard, yeah how hard oh. it is right? so okay another question because your maths online has gone into so many other countries mm-hmm. uh do how does australia's system or or method or curriculum uh compare with the other countries look i mean i know good. singapore is pretty good yeah, look australia's pretty good i think the, the actual curriculums of, are all, you know, I wouldn't say that one curriculum from any country is outstanding and a lot better than anyone else's. So they, we, we, do, we do teach things um, in a little bit of a different order to other countries. Um, but look, you know, Australia's it's got a pretty robust system. I, I am worried that sort of over the years it's been sort of dumbed down a little bit. And that's, and the reason it is is because um, 
it, it's more to do with the quality or the availability of good teachers in the school system now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember well, it was probably a couple of decades again, uh, 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 you know, ago now, but I remember being in a meeting with someone from the education, the Board of Education, and they essentially admitted that, oh, look, we're going to have to drop some of this stuff because we just haven't got enough teachers who are capable of teaching it. So, and mm, so that was disappointing. And uh, so I don't know whether, I, 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 I suspect maybe in Singapore they would probably wouldn't go through that process. Yeah. You know, but but you know, I I think I think curriculums are, are pretty good around the world. So, do you think the reason Australia's dropping in its results isn't necessarily the curriculum that we use? It's it's the availability of teachers. But do you think it's also got to do with the fact that uh, we don't apply? Like we're not expecting our kids to apply themselves. Yeah, as look, much. I think it is, yeah, it's a mixture of a cultural thing. Yeah, I think you know, um, it just you know, you know, kids from other countries that might come over here and their work ethic, uh, maybe, maybe, probably is a lot high, you know, a lot higher than 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 our than say the Aussie kids. I, I mm -hmm. guess I've seen that. I've certainly seen that. The other thing though is um, I know in Australian schools the teachers. The, the the stuff that they're expected to do in terms of like red tape and administration stuff is just unbelievable. It's just, it is crazy. Oh, he, you've just frozen there, Pat. Oh. It's a lovely picture of you. Hopefully you'll come back on. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just one of the questions actually, Michelle, um, which we've all heard before is, um, when do I need to learn this? When will I ever need this? And uh, not the oh, long that's vision, a good but question. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so um, oh, Pat, so, you're back with oh, us. Sorry, I'm, I went, I went missing, did I? Yes, <laughs> you did. Did you hear that question? Yeah. It's a really good one. Yeah. So the the age old question from the children saying, "But when am I ever going to use this? I will yeah, never I... need to use this. Why <laughs> do I need to learn this concept?" Look, that, like, that's a how look, would you that's a great that one. Yeah, that's that is a great question. And and really, you know, I mean, like educators are taught to actually, you know, this is your response to this question, and this, you know, you need it in this. But reality is, the reality is is that they don't need to know every single bit of maths that they're ever going to learn, okay? So I think if you can if you can respond that, that the maths that you're learning is actually helping you build a logical mind, a problem-solving mind, so that when you come up to a, you know, in life, a pro, and, it, and it's hard when you, when, you know, it is hard talking to kids. And it, I mean, I found it hard talking to my kids and I should know all the answers, which, which obviously I don't. But, but if you can just say, well, look, you know, some of this stuff, you know, it, it, it is without you really knowing it is actually building your logical mind so that when you get older, you'll have you, you'll be able to problem solve a lot better without you without you knowing it. But look, it is a, it is a tough one. There's no I, I probably can't give you an answer that, you know, that's going to that's going to help. Everybody. No, no, that was a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just another one, Pat, like some parents when you talk about the maths anxiety and everything um how would you suggest that parents can sort of overcome their own maths anxiety so they can then effectively teach their children maths right okay um well it is, look it is interesting that, that that we've had lots of parents who have who have you know because their kids have used our program they've used they've started to use our program and they've said oh gee i wish they had this when i was growing up and actually your adult mind if you actually see the see how how maths can be taught you, you actually pick it up quite quickly and quite easily and you actually be quite excited that you're pretty good at maths now but I, that's one way of doing it um and i i know i know I, i'm saying that i know i'm talking about maths online but i know that a lot of parents have done it you know using our program themselves i mean we've had we've had people who as old as i think i remember don from north queensland he was 77 and he, he wrote in he was so excited that he was learning maths for him for the first time right because he he bombed out he said in and, and never you know he always struggled his whole life but he actually found it really good he was really excited about using using maths online and using the program doing well so um yeah that's, that's great they can have a little become, refresher mm, mm. Mm. um just on that note can you give a just a bit of an overview of how maths online how how the maths online program works 
Because we've had a few parents ask that. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so it is, funnily enough, online. So it's maths online. <laughs> uh, so we have a, it's a subscription-based um, program we have. So generally, most homeschooling parents will sign up um, for a, a year, you know, a year at a time. Uh, and there's, there's either one student or the whole family. So we go from one student to however many kids you've got in your in your family. And um, and and the idea is uh, when you when you start, we've got a brand new thing actually called the course planner, which which basically allows you from where wherever you start for the rest of the year. It's sort of to you know maybe you know if you want to have two or three or four or five lessons a week, it'll actually plan out what lessons and then your child just logs in and you know they'll log in and 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 they'll see their lesson you know what lesson they're working on that day so have a, a video tutorial well that's the key thing so that's your instruction and we try to keep that nice and concise um because i'd rather you know you have some people when they you know they'll teach something might take them 15 minutes to teach it and by the end of it believe me your kids fall asleep so you don't want that okay so the idea is to teach it nice and quick and then, you know, maybe four or five minutes at most, and then your child can practice, you know, for 10 minutes or so. If you use that same 15-minute period, okay, that I just described, way better. They have a short explanation. Then they've got interactive questions or worksheet, depending on how, you know, which, which years they're in. And, that, and the whole idea of, of that is they get the, the immediate feedback. I mean, that's really important. You know, you don't want to have, a, have, your, have your child do some work and then, you know, Three weeks later, they find out, oh, yeah, I've got this wrong or, or that. But so that it, it's a pretty simple program. We've got diagnostic tests in there as well to sort of help you find any any sort of missing gaps. But um, what else can I say? And if you can I ask, is, yep. is it OK to use maths online as your only math program? Yeah, look, a lot of homeschoolers do. Um and look, look, originally, when we first designed it, we, we actually did design it as a supplementary, more, more so a supplementary program. Uh, but in time, we've bulked it up. And so a lot of a lot of homeschooling parents use it as as their only resource. The, my only thing I would say that if if you had a child who was really going to go down the um, a mathematical um, career, Right, specialising in something in mathematics, I, I would probably then get a couple of. Te I'd, get, I'd get a textbook for each year as well, in addition. But if you just want to have a good solid, and you, know, you want your child to go pretty, you know, pretty well in maths, generally a lot of homeschooling parents find that's maths online is enough. And do you need to go all the way? Um, I know you said your one of your daughters didn't go all the way through to year twelve. Is it okay to stop in year ten? And just do no more. Yeah, as much as it stresses to. me to say, it, yes, it's fine to stop. <laughs> it is fine to stop in year 10. Okay. All right. Well, we're at one o'clock nearly. Um, are there any other quick questions, Amanda? But No, no, that's um, I've sort of mixed a few questions together, but no, that's great. Thank you, Pat. Okay, you've been so fantastic um, answering all our questions now. You can find uh, Pat on at Maths on, well, not. Pat will talk to you, but you won't get him live. Uh, mathsonline.com.au, but it's also in New Zealand as Maths Buddy. Is it Maths Buddy? Maths, or? maths Buddy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's CTC Maths in the USA. And are, are you under any other names uh, in other uh, countries? Yeah. Yeah. No, where are we? Yeah. Um, you in South Pat Africa? Maths, Maths Buddy South Africa, yeah. But it's soon to be Maths Online in, in India as well. So. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, well, you've been just so great for giving us this time and I'm sure so many homeschoolers will benefit from listening to this uh, later on as well. Great. So thanks very much and uh, we'll just sign off here from uh, My Homeschool. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Just